I know it's been a long time. Three months to be exact. But guess who's back again with another podcast? Yours truly. So without further ado, let's get this episode started. Hit it. Welcome to another episode of the Phoenix Palace Podcast, aka P3, episode 16, the sweet 16 here, P3. Can't believe we actually made it 16 episodes so far, not too bad. So, a couple of announcements before we begin. This is going to be the last podcast overseas, and the reason for that is because I'm going to be coming back to the States here shortly. Uh, the next podcast I'm projected to do, I'm going to go to EA Play or try to go to EA Play this year. I got my tickets and stuff like that already reserved, so... The plan for me is to try and uh, get a feel for Madden 18, get as much time on the game as I possibly can, and not only that, but enjoy the EA Play experience itself, but try to get as much time on Madden 18 so that way I can write some notes down. Um, Also plan on interviewing the devs, Rex, Clint, RG, A-Dub, basically whoever's going to be there, maybe the uh, Madden Ultimate Team guys as well. get a feel of Madden 18 and see what their minds are going in uh, this this upcoming year at Madden, seeing where, um, you know, what what's going to change, you know, for Madden 17, because a lot of these things, let me be honest with you, it's definitely some changes needed for sure. Also, there's going to be timestamps. So before I begin, there are going to be two timestamps that you're going to see in the description below. And this is more so for people who just want to hear the constructive criticism that I'm going to be addressing uh, lastly in this video. Or there are time sets to if you just want to hear all the negatives I have to say about the game, uh, that's going to be your two kind of time steps. And you'll know when I say, you'll know when it's going to be time for, you know, both uh, sides of the coin here. I'll at least make some kind of announcement. And then the also the third thing is I'm re- Kind of coming off of sickness, so if you hear me cough, if you hear me, you know, sneeze and stuff like that, don't mind me. Um, Just kind of ignore it. Again, it's it's been a little bit of a rough ride trying to get up uh, healthy again outside the sickness, and then counting allergies now that it's springtime, it's definitely a little bit tough. So, um, just like I said, just kind of forgive me if you hear coughing and sneezing throughout the podcast. I apologize, and I I promise to get better. I swear. So. <clears throat> Man 17 and brutal honest video opinion podcast it's there's two ways I wanted to I wanted to approach this guns blazing but I what I realized is that the same problems that I had in the beginning of the year or the same skepticism it still repeated itself this year in Madden and uh it's kind of disappointing to, to in a certain way to and to a degree of none of the none of the issues that I had were kind of solved. None of the I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong. I didn't get really proven wrong, unfortunately, which is disappointing to hear. But um, again, I'm gonna go through the list here shortly, and then, like I said, from that list, I am going to try to offer some suggestions. I know it's late in the development cycle, especially, with, like I said, EA Play coming out and launch literally being months away of really impacting the game at this point in time. But if there is a chance to impact it, then I'm taking that chance and making. hopefully I can make my ideas appear in Madden 18. And hopefully Madden 18 is just a way better product. So here we go. Here's the current, here's the not constructive part yet. The criticism, Madden 17. If I have words to describe Madden 17, Overall, from August when I got the game to April 25th, the aka the fourth quarter of Madden, is that Madden has, or excuse me, Madden 17 has become stagnant, boring, carbon copied, rinse and repeat, 
no hope, just disappointing in a way. And the reason I say that is because a lot of issues of Matt, it runs into the same issue again that I've had with 16, that I've had with 15. It is just one of those, if you got it, if the development team would have just fixed blank, we could have been okay. Now, most of it stems around the whole nickel blitz, dollar DB fire issues, the slide protection, the offensive line, how badly they have been exposed, how awful the offensive line have been exposed this year because of nano detection system, how bad of an emphasis there needs to be. I know it's not sexy. I know marketing doesn't like the big ugly. It's called the offensive line. But for the love of God and everything that lo- the Madden gods can do, the offensive line has to be our priority and fix, along with some other things here too. But offensive line has to be the number one fix going into this. Not the lazy fix of, okay, we're just now going to make the blitzing DB off nickel blitz two. We're just going to put him like on a quarterback container, wide loop him now. No, 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 no. Fix the offensive line. It's gotten so bad now with the offensive line that they literally run pa- and downfield blocking and have bad pass protection, that they literally run past defenders now. Madden 16, they at least tried. They at least put some effort into locking people. Madden 17, it's a complete joke of how bad, just how bad the offensive line is with targeting and pass protection, with getting just completely looped, with pa- of halfback blocking, Slide protection not working as well as it should because even though you put your halfback on a you you block your halfback and you slide left and you know you put an amount of check and release and you slide them left or slide them right or whatever the case may be you slide them towards the blitz so the DB fire can't or the DB fire the nickel blitz can't get in and they completely either block it inside or they completely ignore the blitzing guy coming in. That's always awesome. That's always awesome. So that has to be fixed going into 18 because, man, oh, man, if we have to deal with another year of really bad offensive line mechanics, I am going to scream. I am actually going to scream. We even talk about the deep blues, the zone coverage. How do you guys add in all these somewhat functioning new zones? The only one that really consistently works is the cloud flat. The hard flat still doesn't play too hard. The soft squats, I don't know what they do anymore. Quarter flats, don't know what they do. Seam flats, they just stand there, kind of take space. You know, freaking curl flat, the purples, they're hit and miss. I don't even know what they do half the time because one minute they actually play the way they're supposed to, and again, they do the same thing they've been doing for years kind of just sitting there taking up space kind of looking around like i don't know what to do look at me i'm a curl flat and i don't know what to do what to do to do yeah that's gotta change deep blues oh my goodness I, the deep how does no how in the production cycle obviously for men going into man 17 you had to face the flats the flats were probably by far the biggest issue right but how do you not fix the deep blues? The things that literally were the cause of people's ire in Madden 16 with the one play touchdowns, which we still have, by the way, in Madden 17. That play so passively, that don't animate, that don't, that get out leveraged by compact that says somehow, some way, even though cover three is supposed to have outside leverage. How does that happen? How does that happen? How do bunch sets literally bunch compacted gun tight gun tight all set tight end gun tr- uh gun snugs gun snugs flip gun bunch weak gun bunch strong gun bunch a single back bunch bunch eight whatever anything that's compacted how does that beat cover three consistently in the NFL? How does gun how do bunch sets literally literally dominate the game of Madden as opposed to 
spread sets in the New England Patriots defense, or excuse me, in the New England Patriots offensive system. How? 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 And speaking of systems and schemes and everything like that, how is it that Madden 17 has degraded itself to literally in Madden 16 and Madden 15, but most likely and more than anything in Madden, Madden 17? How have we degraded ourselves now? To where literally we can only run two or three formations in the game because they're the only ones that can pick up nickel blitz, dollar DB fire, and other edge slant zone two, bug slant three, cornerback zone blitz. Like this is the year that people have sent cornerback blitz. Cornerback blitz. Think about that. Cornerback blitz. Nobody in their grandmother used to call cornerback blitz now, but now in Madden 17, everybody does it. That used to be the joke play. Now you now you see it like it's like it's normal. Like that's not that's not how it should be. That's not how it should be, man. Like I just I don't get it to where like we've had all these new features, ball physics, field goal block glitches, zones, jokes, new fake out system, and they all are awful this year, man. New especially the juke system. The juke system is a joke. The juke system is a complete joke in the way that the only thing that works is the truck and the stiff arm. And the only reason the stiff arm works is because in Madden Ultimate Team, we have this bruising bag chemistry, which you have to spam the A button. We're not even going to talk about Madden Ultimate Team yet because I got a clown on that because and roast the Madden Ultimate Team, guys, because the game is that mode has regressed horribly. But more back back to this whole juke system thing. How is it that speedbacks have lost their complete value this year? Like, honestly, have lost all their value this year. And it's the year of the power back. It has become the year of the Marshawn Lynch, Amon Green, Eddie Lacy, David Johnson type of backs this year. Like Garrett Blunt type of backs this year. How 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 have we how have we fallen so far? Where are the speed bags that are supposed to be kind of dominating the game to the Shea McCoys, the Jamal Charles of the game, the Devontae Freemans of the game? Like none of them exist anymore because of how bad the juice system was designed and how bad they've gotten nerfed because people complain about how much uh, broken tackles they were at the beginning of the year when Derrick Henry is dominating the game first half first quarter of the Madden season that's a problem Derrick freaking Henry that's a problem that's a problem and again I know people was like well you know we had the issue of like you know like at draft champions guys would just break bounce off like in this but that's a problem that's draft champions that was the reason why everybody complained so much because of draft champions. It's not because they, you couldn't do that in Man Ultimate. Like they weren't dominated in Man Ultimate. It's because people complained about draft champions so much that other features in the game got nerfed because of it. Because they, because, and stuff wasn't the sad part. Is stuff wasn't bad at the beginning of the year. I love the pass rush at the beginning of the year. It was actually realistic. If you had a bad offensive line, you were getting screwed. You were, I mean, you were getting screwed over. Like, that's your ass, Mr. Postman. Like, but people complain, oh, because, you know, I, I, I can't get the ball fast enough. Now. I can't set my one play touchdowns fast enough. So now, yo, Rex, patch it. Clay, patch it. Like, and now guess what? We had the phenomenon of bronze off of 55 overalls blocking J.J. Watt like it's nothing. Khalil Max like it's nothing. And Dominican Sue is like it's nothing. Think about that, folks. We have fallen so far that bronze offensive line were dominating the game in salary cap and draft champions like it did not matter now mind you they fixed it but still think about that folks we really fallen that far how do we get here how do we get here it's it's crazy to me let's talk about another feature that i I called at the beginning of the year having problems field goal blocking and the glitches that follow from field goal blocking I said at the beginning of the year, it's only a matter of time before somebody finds a field goal block list. Check the record. Go back to that video. Go back to that past video of where I said that. And I, I guarantee you, you're going to be like, dang, he's right. Ball physics. Biggest joke because it got passed in catching traffic scenario. So we reverted back to Madden 16 catch animations that are literally one-sided. 
Now, mind you, like the ball comes out if like fifty thousand people are j- are like just running into each other because they don't go for the ball anymore. Their ball tracking feature and the ball tracking that the defense used to have gone. It got I don't know it got lost in the code somewhere. It probably got taken out of the code somewhere. But it used to be, especially in Madden 15, you threw all the ball up. Well, defenses were on it. They knew where the ball was and they were attacking the ball. Nowadays, they don't even know where the ball is at. They really, if they do know where the ball is at, they literally sit and wait and wait until somebody catches it and then go. Like it's like everybody plays so conservative. It's like your most, even your most aggressive guys play conservative, which should not happen. If they're aggressive, be let them be aggressive in the game. Have them have them code it differently than the conservative guys. That's an AI issue that needs to be fixed. I don't understand like how I can have a Deion Sanders and I can have a Night Train Lane or Richard Sherman and they literally wait till somebody catches the ball and they make a play. Like no, if they're throwing, if you're throwing to their side, they're gonna make you pay for it, and that's the problem. In Madden, in deep zones, and everything about Madden, it, Madden doesn't put the fear in you of making a bad decision, and it's been like that for years. And I really wish the dev team would actually stop and stop that whole stigma and actually change that narrative in Madden 18. There's no fear. You can run Z-Spot gun bunch against the cover three and literally throw it to the middle of the field where the only person over there is the fucking middle safety. And he, can, he just sits there. He just sits there and you can just throw that that, pose, that deep pose around all day long in front of him. And the safety is just going to sit there like, well, can't get there. Nah, sorry, sorry, guys, can't get there. That's got to change, man. That has to change. What I don't hold for Madden 18 is that the dev team does this tendency where they give us a completely brand new feature where they, where we don't ask for it. For instance, remember in Madden 15 how there was a face catch and everything like that and our DBs couldn't react? Now we had a brand new catch system and DB wide out interactions, which, by the way, are horrible. It 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 we didn't ask for that. All we asked was, hey, when the ball is in the air, just have our have our DBs, our safeties, and our cornerbacks just jump up for the ball. And that's all we asked for. We didn't ask for wide our wide receiver DB interaction. We didn't ask for like force canned animations that we have no control over. We didn't ask for that. Madden 16 double juking. All we asked for is that the double juke got nerfed. That's it. Everything else was fine. The spin move was fine. The juke, even the regular juke moves is fine. But now we got this brand new juke system with brand new fake out interactions, which nobody asked for. Nobody asked for it. We need to go back to Madden 16's juke system. Even go back to Madden 25's juke system, how clean that was. Go back. If you don't believe me, go back. The good taste where you could juke, man. That's what we need. That's why I always say that was just another reason why Madden 25. It's the best Madden I've ever played. Even simple as this, the zone, the global shade, or the global shading, doesn't work in Madden 17. Doesn't work inside, outside. Doesn't work. Doesn't matter what you can jam that seven times in a row. Phoenix shade last year doesn't work this year. Like give, you give us the tools that don't work, man. How do you give us tools in the game and options in the game that don't work? Protect the sticks doesn't work. Does not work. With the new zones and the way they do, that does not work. Again, how do you give us features? Give it, If you're going to give us the tools, make sure they all work. All of them. Every single last one of them. Global shading, individual shading, shading, like all types of <laughs> slim shading. I don't care. <laughs> make sure they all work, man. It's, it's so, so bad. Throw out a sax. I'm looking at my features of throw out a sacks. You had it right the first. And then people complain because they haven't learned to actually stop holding the button to pass when you're getting hit. You had it right. Didn't need to nerf that. Thank you, tuning update. From September. That's on Azure FX. Like I said, I mentioned this so many times. And this is literally one of the, the biggest banes of Madden to me these days. Was that that tuning update on friday september 23rd 2016 was the literally the worst tuning update madden 17 could have ever had because it literally all that work that the, uh, it's, it's not, mm, i shouldn't say that all the greatness that madden 17 had gone after that tuning update 
G-O-N-E, gone. Now, let's talk about the main issue. Throw drop picks, C routes, anybody, any tight end can run a, a post route, or excuse me, not post route, excuse me. They can run a corner route cleanly, beat man coverage. You can have 99 Deion Sanders covering a tight end. Deion Sanders gets toasted by like a Travis Kelsey. Not even like a Jordan Reed where he probably has like really decent, good enough route running, but shouldn't still be Deion, by the way. It's, it's so many things that are wrong with this game, man. Again, now this is something like, obviously these are things the community has always talked about. And like I said, I'm just reinforcing the communities and myself uh, criticisms of the game. But you see, I, I just don't look forward to the Madden Championship, man, where you're going to literally see the Nickel Blitz show starring Nickel Blitz, too, and Dollar DB Fire. Or see the same bunch. See the same snug. See the same high point pass. I didn't even mention that. High point passing. It's become an exploit. Guys, you literally high point pass in the middle of the field and the safety again because the deep blues react so pa- passively. They, it's just no danger. It's like it's, I'm just gonna play cowboy and just gunslinger it out. It's so bad. We haven't even talked about mutt real quick. Let me go through. Let me roast mutt because mutt literally. It was like it's kind of like the song that Fifty Cent used to do. Damn homie, in high school you used to be the man, homie. What happened to you? Literally, that's mutt right now. Mutt was like basically the star quarterback of the the varsity team in high school. Everybody loved Mutt. And then senior year, they just said, "Fuck it." We're, we're, we got they called the case of the senior eyes. They got too full of themselves. They didn't. They weren't hung. Mutt literally regressed. Now again, constructive criticism comes later. But there were some good things that Mutt did implement. But it's just like. It got stale. The guy, like, all players having the same chemistries, or most of the majority of players have the same chemistries. There's no variation in cards. They're just plus one. It's basically you're playing for their name and a skin rather than the actual plur- the actual person itself. And because of the game mechanics the way they are and the chemistries that ended up being in mud, focus kicker, making field goal block, or excuse me, field goal kicks easier which at the beginning of the year i could have swore there was a at the blog that says we are trying to make field goals harder or even in the beginning streams with the dev team the goal was to make field goals harder they didn't because the focus kicker icing the kicker didn't work for a while like it, <sighs> bruising back now you just spam a jump the snap you could play the d-line all day and get a perfect snap and then Somehow, by the way, quick side note: D line users are back. How do they come back? They should have. They should have been like away into the abyss. They shouldn't have come back. Last year, they were non-existent, or if they did exist. They were not winning as many battles as they did this year. They are just back. They need to go back to the way they were in Madden 16, where they were just completely nerfed out. Sorry, Rex, but hey, man, y'all, you, you got, you got to get nerfed again, bro. Let's talk about the constructive. Let's talk about constructive stuff now. I'm kind of done with this negative stuff. So, <clears throat> although we've had a lot of issues in Madden 17, one thing I do hope that Madden 17 includes is a lot more variety of playbooks. Make playbooks great again. I, I hate using that that whole make something great again, but honestly, make play, play playbooks great because. Playbooks have become so bland nowadays and boring on both sides of the offense, defense. Like, playbooks just need a massive update, man. Would love to see, like, the Detroit Lions get an upgraded, uh, upgraded playbook. Dallas Cowboys or another one. Arizona Cardinals, Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm trying to think of other ones that are off the top of my head that haven't had updated in a long time. The New England Patriots could use one. The Saints could use one. Holy crap. I am so sick of Pistol Bunch tight end. lie. That's one of the formations I'm low-key hoping goes away is Pistol Bunch tight end because I hate that formation. But in all seriousness, the Saints definitely need to update. They haven't been updated in forever in a day. 
Um, but a lot of these books just need, uh, like I said, especially defenses. I would love to see uh, Dick LeBeau Titan or Dick LeBeau Titans defense get a lot of zone blitz at love, like to the point where like you just see just pages upon pages of zone blitzes. Like that should be just there's like okay you can run cover two three four and have the bases but you should be there should be zone blitz heavy or zone blitz heavy same thing with the Steelers to a degree they're more they're more of a cover two zone blitz style now with their defensive coordinator but we need more cover three zone blitzes man like I know my scrape isn't the popular thing to do but we need more my scrape <laughs> type of blitzes in uh Madden eighteen this year another thing I would like to see. Honestly, at it, I actually would love to see like a route running system or not a a, uh, a route running tier system. Now, similar to the juice system, not every person is going to be able to run a C route perfectly or get separation like that. Especially, and this kind of goes into both sides of the ball here, where I love to see man covers kind of get a tier system slash an update because it seems to me that year after year, man covers can't decide or uh, the devs can't decide whether man covers should be OP or o- under uh, UP, I guess underpowered um and it shouldn't be like that where c routes or tight end corner routes should literally be breaking away man, away from man cover so easily especially if there's guys like Dion or revis in his past or you know the denver broncos with to and chris harris jr being so good in man coverage that you know it kind of needs to implement it's kind of needs to implement emulate real life where like those factors that agility that speed that route running that acceleration those need to matter a lot more than what they are right now now i know you could say like well it's kind of like that in a little matchup stick that you got when you before you snap the ball but that's not good enough like it actually has to play that way because sometimes you can have a bashaw pair you can have like a bashaw pairman toasting to keep to lead in man coverage because and not just like not just toasting as like running down the field, but I'm talking about getting a, getting a C route, an out route, you know, just because the game dictates that, you know, because it's man coverage, this route beats that all the time, like nine times out of ten. That shouldn't be like that. So I like to see man coverage definitely get more of a be more factor, I guess more of a factor than anything, and route running be more of a factor. Like if you got seventy route running you should be sluggish running routes. Like, your route, like, you should be barely breaking away from man covers. Like, put the more emphasis on having guys that can run routes. Like, that's kind of what the NFL has result, uh, revolved around when it comes to their receivers. It's obviously fat, fast, size, strength, you know, being able to get off the line, you know, get their, or a.k.a. release, um, and run routes. Because if you can't run routes, obviously you're not going to get open. So, Again, would love to see that going forward in Madden 18. Same thing with again, again man covers and route running, getting a, a tier system uh, implemented into the game. Another thing that I'd like to see in Madden 18 is now Rex has mentioned this as competitive settings, but I need to know more about these competitive settings and what they mean. Now, I would love to see less drop picks. I would love to see less fluke in Madden 17. I know that's kind of weird to say, but would love to see like less randomness happen. And I know it's an NFL game, or it's gonna be a football game, and football is random. Anything can happen. It's chaotic like that. But would love to see less random plays, like getting randomly hit stick by a, a Deion Sanders and fumbling. That shouldn't happen. Like Deion Sanders is not even touching anybody, but yet can make tackles. You know, ratings have to play out the way they need to play out. You know schemes and and calls and you know like I said all the tools that you give us slide protection, global shading stuff like that they need to work out a lot more than what they do. <clears throat> One more suggestion and then we'll end it on this note because it is kind of getting on that 30, 30 minute mark here. Uh, one suggestion I do have and again, this is just me personally, but again going back to the scheme argument here. We need to, and the tools argument, kind of combine these two in the, into one here. Would love to see more game mechanics in terms of offenses or in terms of schemes work properly. I understand the read option got nerfed to 25 because it was OP. That needs to be brought back. Same thing with pistol runs and the handoffs for pistol runs like counter and stretch and halfback zone, stuff like that. They need to be brought back. The speed needs to be back up 
to where it used to be. Um, I know people didn't like the, you know, being people being in empty sets all day, but empty hasn't made a return. Like spread, like these spread, like doubles, like you know, there's a shotgun spread with the four wide receivers stuff like that. That needs to be made a, a return back. Zone read, return. It's power spread, option, return. You know. The stuff that makes different football, basically the stuff that identifies different football teams work. Like I say, we love to run Cam Newton's scheme. Can't do it in Madden 17. We love to run, run the Shanahan zone run West Coast scheme. Can't do that because zone run doesn't work nearly as well as it did in Madden 16. And I really wish I could see it back in Madden 17, especially with the inside zone splits that they like to run. Well, just features that make teams different, unique. Give them that identity of, like I said, Tom Brady system, Patriots offense, spread system. Love to see it work. Would love, absolutely love to see it work. Doesn't this year. All all these different playbooks you have, give them the power to operate the way they need to. And I'm like I said, these are, these aren't just for you guys that are listening right now. This is also going to be set at EA Play. So when I bring it up to the dev team. I'm going to harp on this heavily, especially if A-Dub and Rex are going to be there. Like, you, you two need, and Clint there, especially with the offensive line, the way they block, it all starts with the offensive line and the mechanics allowing us to be different. You know, I don't like playing the same. I know people are tired of running the same scheme, the Ram scheme, the Saints scheme, the Cardinal scheme, the Bronco scheme, the Jets scheme, the run, the jumbo heavy scheme. Like, people are tired of, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but... I would imagine people get tired of running or and or running into the same schemes all the time. The same defenses, nickel blitz, dollar DB fire all the time. Let us allow us to be creative. Stop limiting us. Blitzes. Stop. I know nano detection is there to stop the A-gas because people keep complaining about it. But that just means the offensive line needs to be drastically fixed, Rex. Let us be creative with our blitzes. That's how people make their money in the NFL creative blitzing you know what i'm saying so again these are just suggestions let me know what you guys think appreciate you guys for listening uh i know it's been a while since i uh, podcasted here and i know this was a long episode and kind of ranty and going off on tangents left and right but again that's just kind of the the whole premise behind brutal honesty and constructive criticism videos man you just you just go you just let it all out. You just go with your frustrations. And then you just you bring it in with some constructive criticism. Now, like I said, this game is a step up. I see the progress. I see the vision that Rex is trying to do. I honestly do see it. And I can see the potential this game can go with Madden 18, 19, 20, especially with it growing as an eSport. I see where this is going. And it's a good thing. And honestly, it's kind of a blessing in disguise that the, the game's issues are being shown on live national audiences and TVs, NFL Network, <coughs> on Twitch, stuff like that. Because it forces the developers to actually fix said things that have been plaguing the game for years. It, it puts a whole new pressure on it, which I like. So I'm like, yes, something that actually light a fire under the devs and say, let's get that fixed. Let's fix that offensive line. Let's fix those deep blues. Let's fix, you know, this a this and the that and the third, man. I like it. Again, I see the vision. I know where they're trying to go with this. And if it, they just got to execute better. The execution has to be a lot better than what it is. We can't have the same glitches, the run pass commit glitch, that type of thing, start off at the beginning of the year and make it past testing. Or if it does happen in testing and the feedback is there, listen to the feedback. Listen to those guys that go down and test your games. Listen to those guys that, you know, those game changers that come down and meet with you guys. And, you know, all that stuff. Listen to them. That's why you pick them, right? That's why they're part of your team, right? Pick, like, you know, listen to them. So, that's enough of me. I'm done. I'm done. I, I went way over where I was supposed to go to. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I know, again, I say, like, the, the next episode is coming in a couple of months. But still, show some support. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter. That's where I'm going to be mostly active. Uh, so, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, you kind of get a sense of how I already feel about the game. And, uh, you know, just 
my hopes for the future and stuff like that. And I talk to a lot of people on both sides of the community, sim, the sim community and the competitive community. So I'm trying to get all that feedback to the developers, you know, trying to help some people um, that are presenting good feedback, get their points heard and stuff like that. So follow me on Twitter. If you got some good stuff, man, hey, send it my way. I make sure to try to do my best to get the game, uh, the devs, the devs to hear your opinion and stuff like that. I'll pass that on. So uh, that is it, man. I'm out of here. Five G's. Take me out, outro. Peace.